Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Anywho, let's uh, have a look at the R5's autofocus in this camera is pretty game changing. I mean, most of my pet photography that I've been doing, which is just really stickly for my own dog. So the way that they are in their natural kind of surroundings that they get walked in, how they naturally behave. I don't want to do anything that's staged so that when the time actually comes and they're no longer with us, I can actually remember that dog that way. So in the past, I've been using a 5D Mark II up until about six months ago when I got the EOS R. But neither of these two cameras really made it very easy for me to shoot my dog Dante. He's, he's erratic, he's a staffy, an English staffy. He runs around all over the place. He's like a pocket rocket. He's full of energy. And you really have to be prepared, like what you do sometimes in street photography, to set a frame and wait for him to hit that frame to get that shot, to get that natural reaction shot. And for the most part, for me, that's been very, very hard because he is so erratic and so all over the place and that's part of why i love the dog but now that i've got this i just want to show you the first results that i got with it so this is absolutely the first photograph that i shot with the camera before i made the animation which you can have a look it up here it's absolutely the first shots that i took with the camera and all i can say is it blew me away i sent I sent Dante out and he ran off out into the distance as he normally does. He heads way out and off into the distance and I just waited for him to get way, way, way out. I had a Sigma 70 to 200 mil lens on the camera at 200 mils at f2.8 and I put it into shutter priority because that's just how I like to shoot. And I called him back and he sprinted back towards me and I hit the back focus button. It locked straight onto his face. I hit the... Uh, shutter release button and sprayed off a spurt of photographs as fast as I could get the camera to run until he got towards me and I think it took something like 17 or 18 photographs in the second and a half or 30 photographs or whatever it was that it took and it got 100% in focus 100% of them tack sharp on the eye on a moving subject that was running directly towards the camera you can run a lot faster than what i can and it got all of them except for when he went within the minimum focus distance which is expected because the lens can't focus there anyway but the thing that blew me away about it wasn't that it got all the photographs in focus the thing that really surprised me was that the sigma lens through the adapter was able to get 100 percent of those shots in focus and i've never had a camera ever get 100 percent of the photographs of a moving subject in focus uh that's only because i've been using this this is my only other autofocus camera apart from the other eos r that i have and all the rest of them have been cameras like the 5d mark iii where yes you have autofocus but it's not going to track a moving subject like that it's you know a lot of setting and static and well that's what i find the uh, the sorry, the 5D Mark II, not the 5D Mark III, the 5D Mark II um, camera is, is good at it. It's, it's kind of like set a position, take a shot. It's a slower workflow. This camera is unbelievable in terms of autofocus. Like, I don't think I ever want to use another camera. I'm, I'm converting these to animation cameras because I just don't ever see myself using them again as either a stills camera or a video camera because this camera, now that they have seemed to have addressed the overheating, looks like it has solved all the problems that I've had with the camera. And with the update that I did to the RF 15 to 35 and the update that I did to the camera the other day, the focus uh, ability for the animal IAF I don't know whether they made any improvements to it, but it surely feels like they did because I'm I'm pretty much just getting everything in focus all of the time. And, you know, I can be pretty reckless with this camera. I've got it built in a way where it's not great in terms of um, balancing because I'm trying to get my hand to move in a certain way so it goes out of balance and 
it gets a little bit shaky because I'm trying to look at the other features inside the camera at the same time. But it just doesn't lose the focus on my dog's eyes. And I, I just can't get over it. Like, that's why I'm making this video. I'm really blown away by it. And I think it's something that not a lot of people are really talking about. Everyone's just focusing on heating control and overheating. But for me, it's so damn impressive. It is so impressive that for anyone who's considering this camera as a photographer or even a videographer, if you're thinking you need a camera with autofocus, this has the best autofocus of any camera professionally that I've ever used. And that goes for the Sony cameras. This, I haven't tried the new A7S III, but this has by far the best autofocus of any camera I've used ever. Ever. Not that I'm an autofocus kind of guy because I like to pull focus myself. But if I am in a pinch and something is really difficult where someone's coming very close to the lens, this camera is going to nail that focus the majority of the time and with your pets that are erratic you know they have a tendency to run right up into the camera and make it very hard to focus um this 15 to 35 on this camera it just gets the focus because it has such a close focus on the lens so yeah i just thought i'd share some thoughts with some of my findings on this camera i know that some of you requested uh some videos on dynamic range and stuff like that I'm currently putting together a longer review of the camera. It's going to take a little bit of time to do because I want to do it thoroughly. That's the way I'm trained. Uh, I don't want to put out a half-baked kind of proper review. But this, this, this kind of mini, mini, mini review about the animal eye autofocus just really got me excited. And, it's, and that's only because I've had so much trouble in the past taking photos of my dog who is just the most beautiful, well, I think he's the most beautiful dog, uh, but he's, a, he's really hard to film and he's really hard to photograph. So I just thought I'd share that. My dog's hard to photograph. If you've got dogs or pets or you're into wildlife photography and you haven't tried this camera, you should, you should give it a go because uh, all the negative press is just not warranted. That's it. See you later, guys.